Now You See Me 2013. The narrative commences with Jay, Daniel Atlas, portrayed by Jesse Eisenberg, showcasing a card trick and articulating, draw near, closer. The more you believe you perceive, the simpler it becomes to deceive you. What is perception? It's gazing, yet fundamentally, it involves filtering, interpreting, and questing for significance. My role, to seize that invaluable gift you bestow upon me, your attention, and wield it to my advantage. Chicago, Monday. Daniel is a street performer in Chicago. He is shown doing a card trick to an attractive young girl. The seemingly typical card tricks climax in the side of the John Hancock Center somehow reflecting his card. The performance is being watched by a mysterious hooded man whose face is never seen. Afterwards, the attractive girl, who turns out to be a big fan of Daniel, charms him into taking her to his apartment for sex. Before they can begin, though, he is distracted by the discovery of a lover's tarot card. On one side of the card is the text March 29th, for 44 p.m., 45 East Evan Street, New York, New York. New Orleans, Tuesday. At a restaurant, we meet Merritt McKinney, Woody Harrelson, a street mentalist and hypnotist. He demonstrates his act on a married couple. First, he hypnotizes the wife so she can't speak or move, while he gets under the brain of husband, and through his mind reading exposes the man as an adulterer who is sleeping with his wife's sister. Merritt then fleeces the man out of $250 before hypnotizing them into forgetting the matter. While he's packing up his posters, he finds a hermit tarot card. New York, Wednesday. On a New York City ferry boat, we meet Jack Wilder, Dave Franco, a street con artist and magician who lures in customers by betting them money if they can figure out how he bends a spoon with his mind. One correctly guesses it, and Wilder successfully pays him, only to pickpocket the guesser's wallet. He then flees, bumping into the mystery hooded man, who slips a death tarot card into Wilder's coat pocket. Los Angeles, Thursday. At a theater downtown, Henley Reeves' Isla Fisher is a train stage performer. She finishes off her act with a water tank escape act in which she seemingly is eaten alive by flesh-eating piranhas, only to emerge alive and well in the middle of the crowd seconds after the water turns a bloody red. As she packs up her supplies, she finds a high priestess tarot card floating in the tank. The four street performers each travel to New York City, arriving at a rundown apartment on the Lower East Side. Daniel and Henley are surprised when they see each other, as Henley is Daniel's former personal assistant, and Merritt is able to mind-read that they used to date. While Merritt and Henley complain about Daniel's controlling personality, Jack arrives date and introduces himself as Daniel's fan. He is able to pick the lock of the apartment they have been invited to, but no one is inside. Instead, they discover the blueprints of some amazing machinery that they know could help propel them to stardom. Las Vegas, one year later. One year later, the four magicians have declared themselves an official troupe known as the Four Horsemen, and are now sponsored by insurance magnate Arthur Tressler, Michael Kane. They are performing on stage at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. For their final trick, they declare that they are going to do something that has never been done before on any magic stage, they are going to rob a bank. The crowd is very enthusiastic, and there are a large number of volunteers who seem to have a vendetta, so Daniel declares that they are going to select a volunteer at random. Merritt, Henley and Wilder go around with bowls of ping-pong balls to allow the audience to make the selection. Wilder tosses Daniel a ping-pong ball with a letter B, which tells them which section to choose a volunteer from. Merritt then tosses a five ball to give them a row to choose from, and lastly, Henley tosses a 13 ball and the man seated in seat B513, a Frenchman named Etienne Forcier, Jose Garcia, stands up. Etienne says on the mic that his bank is the Credit Republican to Paris. While Etienne is making his way to the stage, Daniel takes the time to point Tressler out in the crowd and express the horseman's gratitude towards him for sponsoring them. On stage, Etienne is briefed by Merritt, while Wilder fits him out with a teleportation helmet. Daniel then hands Etienne a set of playing cards, and has him pick a card at random. He then has Etienne sign his name in English on the card he chose, a red two of hearts. The troop now conjures a teleporter in the middle of the stage. They have Etienne climb onto the platform. Merritt reminds Etienne that it's 11.50pm now in Las Vegas and 8.50am in Paris, 
so his bank will be opening in about 10 minutes. They then activate the teleporter, and Atien seemingly is successfully teleported off the stage. In Paris, at the exact same moment, to be precise, Atien stands up in the vault of his bank. Video cameras built into the helmet and a microphone allow him to communicate with the Las Vegas stage. He sees a big pile of money in the middle of the room, approximately 3 million euros worth. Daniel instructs Etienne to put the card he just signed on the floor in the middle of the money pile, along with his ticket stub from the performance. He then tells Etienne to push a button on the side of his helmet. The button activates an air duct that vacuums up the entire pile of money. Moments later, bank employees arriving for work at that bank open the vault and discover the safe is indeed empty, with only the card and ticket stub on the floor. Meanwhile, their money is being showered on the Las Vegas crowd. FBI agent Dylan Rhodes, Mark Ruffalo, is called to investigate the theft and is partnered with Interpol agent Alma Dre, Melanie Loran. Alma has already deemed interrogation useless, but Dylan decides to do the interviews himself. Etienne insists on his innocence and sincerely believes he was transported to France, but it is soon discovered he had been hypnotized after Etienne suddenly acts like he's in a philharmonic orchestra upon hearing Dylan say the word bullshit. They interrogate the four horsemen next, Jack is at ease enough to sleep, while aboard Henley magically makes her opposite chair spin. Merritt turns the interview against them, pointing out the secrets that Alma is hiding and how Dylan has abandonment issues, likely because of his father, important later in the film. Daniel's interview creates the most tension, as he taunts Dylan with the fact that the police have no proof and that the four horsemen will always be ahead. Unable to arrest them when the only explanation they have for the theft is magic, the police are forced to release their suspects. While Dylan stews over this, an officer runs up to him and eagerly tells him that one of the audience members was Thaddeus Bradley Morgan Freeman, an ex-magician who makes money by revealing the secrets behind other magicians' tricks. Thaddeus had actually recorded the show and figured out how the heist was done. He takes the police back to the stage, where he puts Dylan through the volunteer audience member's position and explains how the man was transported to Paris. The four horsemen stole the money weeks before and manipulated the audience into believing it happened in real time. The French bank vault to which Etienne was apparently transported was a duplicate beneath the stage. He merely dropped through a trapdoor. And Etienne himself was not chosen at random. The magicians had palmed ping-pong balls with a seat number which they exchanged for the ones picked from the bowls. No.